We want to discuss about the impact of technology, fintech, consumer expectations in the future of banking. Banks are between us during centuries, bringing innovation to our lives. In several decades, banks brought to us new technology like ATMs in the 60s, electronic card payment systems in the 70s, internet banking after the 2000s, and in the last decade, mobile banking. They are frontiers of the use of technology. But in the last decades or two decades, new technologies are emerging. A data explosion is happening. The cost of storage and computing is reducing. The conversion of media network and all these new technology like mobile, cloud, AI, machine learning, blockchain, they are bringing new industries to lead the technology adoption and bringing new models, business models to compete with banks. Banks are, have to face with the rising of the customer expectation. New digital ecosystems combining companies to compete with banks. And worse than that, big tech companies are looking to the financial service and seeing that they have, they have an opportunity to catch this market too. On the other side, banks need an aim for higher profits. They want to, to provide a better customer experience to their customers, and they want to adopt omnichannel. But the question is, banks are ready to do that? And more than that, banks can lead in this new technology environment, or will they fall behind fintechs and big techs? Let's talk about this. And now I invite Chi to talk about the customer expectation. Thank you, Alex, for the introduction. Um, as we already know, we're in the middle of this COVID-19 pandemic, and we have seen the rise of expectation from customers to banks because of that. Um, the use of online banking has increased by 20 to 50% um, after COVID-19, and many all-in-one apps are created. For example, um, you guys probably have heard of WeChat. But it's not just China. In Vietnam, there's an app called Momo that allows you to do everything that you need to do from paying uh, for utilities, transfer money to your friends, buying groceries, buying clothes, buying movie tickets, to playing games with friends to win a prize. And it even has all the vouchers from different stores across the country. These fintech companies really raised the bar higher for the customer expectations. And I think because of that, banks need to rethink how they could keep up with these fintech companies. Nowadays, customers have access to internet easily from their phones, so they can research different services, products, and costs. And I could be wondering, why does my bank not have this technology or these products like the other banks have? And they could switch bank easily. And moreover, I think that customers are trusting the fintech more and more because digital banks with cool names nowadays are easily accepted. For example, you have Timo Bank in Vietnam. Before, you would never see banks with names like this. Um, it's always the traditional names such as Development Bank or the National Bank of Vietnam and such. Um, customers nowadays, I think especially the young generation, they want to perform all tasks out of their mobile devices and to meet customers' rising expectations and compete with non-banking apps. I think bank needs to incorporate AI as soon as possible. But what are the challenges? Hasha, do you have any idea of that? Thanks, Chi. So challenges faced uh, by the banks. So banks face uh, two sets of challenges. On one hand, bank needs to achieve the speed, agility, and flexibility in it to a fintech. And on the other hand, they must continue managing the scale security standards and regulations requirement of a traditional bank. Despite billions of dollars spent on a change the bank technology initiative each year, Few banks have succeeded in diffusing and scaling AI technologies throughout the operations. Two additional challenges for many banks are, first, the weak core of technology and uh, data backbone, which can't scale more than 150 transactions per second. And second, the outmoded operating model and talent strategy. Core systems are very difficult to replace because of their enormous cost. They have to deal with an inflexible and investment strategy starved technology core. 
fragmented data assets and outdated operating models that hamper the collaboration between businesses and technology teams so challenges faced by customers are as follows data and privacy is one of the biggest challenges which a customer face a fintech has led financial services to become more intensive user of data this gives rise to security concerns around hacking and data breaches and in the banking context where identity theft and the theft of assets can be simultaneous this can lead to potential catastrophic uh, determinant of customers the next one is fraud fintech is particularly vulnerable to cyber crime and espionage fraudulent online transactions and predict uh, are predicted to reach a value of 26.6 billion by 2020 up to 10.7 billion more in from 2016 other such challenges faced by banks are not being able to provide a personalized experience uh, for a customer falling short when resolving customer problems and slow service delivery and long waiting times so to overcome these challenges there are new technologies and upcoming fintechs in the market who are trying to make a mark in the banking industry so my colleague sagar will take you forward with that thank you harshad uh, i really like the points you brought the light upon related to fintechs uh, i would like to add more on it like what i feel like the like fintechs are the key uh, needs of the uh, industry that bring up the possibility in every sector so if i discuss it in a way like if you see every fintech has been backed by number of funding rounds and they work on a sole purpose which lets the uh, lets them to bring out the best in the technology that most of the industry leaders are not bringing up these days so what we can expect is like as you said like there are some shady areas with fintech like there are lack of cyber security there are lack of certain uh, regulations but as we know that the bank has so big infrastructure they can take leverage of uh, those technologies at some point and back them up with a good possibilities of those uh, points that you mentioned uh, if i take an example uh, if you see in india there were all the banks that used to uh, promote the payments by cash if you go to any shop but these days if you go there there is a fintech by the name paytm which nowadays uh, is all over the india is promoting a cashless environment you just need a phone and it it doesn't has to be a smartphone as well you can just do a payment right away so that was the reason like they saw the capabilities in that app and uh, the Res uh, reserve bank of india promoted as a online bank for india so we can see like these type of functionalities when a fintech works on a segment they can be promoted to a or backed by a very stable environment as we can see like in this covid situation we cannot promote like man to man interaction at the banks so i guess the human interaction in future may be a less concerned matter and the banks bank online bankings will be one of the most relevant form of banking and talking about some of the applications that are coming in india are like paytm credit mate and like credit club these are the new fintechs which are taking the leverage of ai and helping the other banks to use their reporting system and fraud detection system to help existing banks come in the industry and work together with fintechs so that they can uh, get advancement in terms of technology hand in hand and talking about future i would like to call alex maybe he can draw some extra points or you can say extra light on the subject that we might be need today thank you sagar well we know that banks need new capabilities to compete in this new technological environment first of all what i can i say they need to reimagine the customer engagement how they engage with the customers they need to embed personalization decisions in the customer journey what to offer when to offer and how to offer a product to a customer they have to automate the decisions and maybe even provide some intelligent decisions automatically on behalf of the customers they cannot afford just to wait for the customers come to the banks they need to go after the customers and partnership with the ecosystems working together transforming the the engagement with the customers with the partners and even extract information and 
provide better services directly with your partner. And they must go after omnichannel. A customer needs to feel very comfortable to go to a, a branch, to use the phone, to use the mobile, to use anything and have a seamless experience with the bank. Let me give you an example from Bradesco in Brazil, which is a big bank. Bradesco created BIA, Bradesco Artificial Intelligence, which is a virtual assistant, first helping employers and then move that to help clients. And now clients can manage, for example, their accounts using the mobile banking, but talking in natural language. They can send messages to BIA over text or audio in WhatsApp, or they can call the bank and BIA will listen to them. A better experience for the customers and for the banks, new data to understand the client and provide better service. To fulfill this kind of technology, banks must adopt a data-driven and AI-powered decision-making process. They have to embed the technology and they have to unlock the data in silos that they have. They have to use all the data and use AI to do that. Ty, do you want to complement on that? Yes, Alex, thank, Alex, thank you. Uh, the ensuring the AI-powered decision-making is no longer a choice for banks, but it is crucial to compete in the new digital era. Uh, adopting a data-driven and AI-powered decision-making to deliver personalized messages and decisions to millions of users in real time and across the full spectrum of engagement channels is very crucial for the banks. And moreover, AI banks will be optimized for operational efficiency through extreme automation of manual tasks and replacement of human decisions by advanced diagnostic engines in diverse areas of bank operations. But there is another important disruptive technology for the banks, and this is the blockchain technology. Banks will have to use the blockchain technology to make the international transactions way more easier or Further, they will apply smart contract to make security clearing and settlements. And also they will use the blockchain in order to ease the KYC verifications. Uh, international transfers are taking two to six business days to process a uh, transaction and it charges average 10% of the transaction amount. In, today, in today's world, this is like frustrating number. However, same transaction can be made in less than 10 seconds with very low cost by using the blockchain technology. And in addition to this, every year financial institutions are paying hundreds of billions of dollars for KIC verifications. The blockchain technology can minimize the cost for this verif verification by using a public ledger performed by the bank. So we can easily say that blockchain technology is disruptive in the banking industry. If the banks uh, would like to compete in the new digital era, they must adopt the blockchain technology as well as AI technology. For sure, Ty. And for that, they also need a better infrastructure. Banks need to adopt cloud. They need to automate the technology. They need to have a, an infrastructure that can be scaled and improve and go faster to the market. And they also need to change the operating model. They cannot compete in silos. They have to adopt a platform operating model, allowing internal partners and external partners to work together and to innovate quickly. With that, we believe that banks can compete and transform the future of banking.